Well, happy Monday and happy start to November, everybody. Thank you for coming out to our weather briefing for this week. Um, our speaker is Dave Dombeck from AccuWeather. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to give a briefing for us. Um, I will stop my share and I need to allow you to share your screen. So you should be all set to start sharing um, your PowerPoint. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. I, I usually look forward. I was all bummed out last spring when we didn't have it. You know, I was all set and of course, it's all history now, but you know, things kind of went downhill fast and, <laughs> and none of the briefings after a certain point happened. So, uh, but I usually do try to do uh, one, one per semester. So this is my slot today. So I, again, I appreciate the, the invitation and I uh, look forward to the briefing and anybody else that's involved. And um, I'll do my presentation. I found the easiest way to do that is to just show um, a PowerPoint. I've just really quickly put some slides in a, uh, in the PowerPoint presentation, go through some information that I want to cover, um, and then obviously open it up for questions um, and comments at the end. So it's always nice to have some back and forth interaction. So I am going to share my screen now, and I am going to get the PowerPoint, and I'll get to the actual PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so here we go. Everybody good with that? You could see the... Um, uh, the PowerPoint, yeah. cool. And I used the, uh, I made sure I used the AccuWeather template there. <laughs> We're supposed to, so I have my AccuWeather sun up there. So, um, so anyway, this is um, some of the things I wanted to cover uh, before we actually get into the current um, and upcoming weather uh, for this week uh, in our area. I did want to, and I, I'm, I'm a climo guy, uh, you know, I do like to kind of, you know, do a little um, summary of where where we are um, climatology wise so far this year, so far this fall, um, and of course being on election eve here, the day before uh, the big election tomorrow, uh, I wanted to just look back at the weather on past elections, uh, what the weather was like here in State College on some past elections uh, going back. I think I went all the way back to 1992. Um, and then also very interesting uh, correlation between this year and 2005 in some of the data that we're looking at. And you know what does that actually mean for the upcoming winter? Now I'm not going to do like Paul Pastelock and some of the other people on our AccuWeather's long range team, I'm not gonna do any kind of extensive you know, long range forecast or parameters and the different indices we're looking at and so forth. I just wanted to point out some very interesting correlations between this year and 05. And it just so happens that uh, 05, 06, um, that's one of our top uh, analogs uh, as far as you know, looking at past winters, as far as comparison, we're using that as one of our top analogs. We have other years, um, winters as well. And then of course, we'll get into the current and upcoming weather um, in our area this week. So again, this is this is our um, basically this is what we're covering here today. Now, as far as the climo, um, just for 2020 so far through November 1st, or actually it was uh, through October 31st. I think I didn't have the data in yet quite for yesterday, but you know essentially it's like 24 hours or so old. But 31.31 uh, .31 inches. Um, now I didn't count what we had yesterday. That's a little bit more than that. The normal precip to date, uh, again, uh, would be about 33 and a half. So we're a little bit below, although we have caught up some uh, over the last you know month or so. Now last year to date, um, we were over 36 inches of uh, total liquid precip. And of course, those of you uh, who were here or you know in other parts of Pennsylvania uh, two years ago in 2018, that was a super wet year. Uh, we ended up breaking our all-time uh, record rainfall or, or liquid precipitation that year, over 63 inches uh, we had. And up to this uh, point, we had over 54 inches uh, of, of precip. So it was a very, very wet year. Uh, temperatures is so far in 2020, we're running 2.2 degrees about uh, above normal for the year. Um, and in the last two months, I just looked at September and October as far as like where we were in relation to normal, 
Uh, September had 63% of normal precip, so we were drier. We continued that dry streak that we were in uh, for much of the summer, or at least from July on. Um, and the, the temperatures in September, we had some ups and downs, and you average it all out, and we ended up being very close to normal, um, just one-tenth of a degree above. Uh, October, we were a little bit above normal precipitation, so we, we kind of broke that streak of being drier than normal a little bit above 3.3 versus, um, that should say 3.03, uh, that's not, oh, <laughs> oops, hold on a second here, I gotta go back. Yeah, that should say 3.03, 3 not <laughs> 0, 0, uh, 0.03, but anyway, you could see we were just slightly above uh, normal. And, and, and the temperatures uh, for October were uh, just a little over a degree uh, above normal. Snowfall, um, now, last year, our first measurable, our, our first uh, snow of the season was a trace. Our first trace of snow is November 7th. Our first measurable, uh, we had two inches on the 23rd. And of course, we just had our first uh, trace, our first snowflakes of the season last night and earlier uh, today. Now, look back uh, at some of the past uh, presidential elections, uh, the election day here in State College. Um, and again, I went back to 1992. Uh, and for those of you, the old rule of thumb, I remember learning this in about seventh or eighth grade, and, I, and it always stuck with me all my days. Uh, election day, you could always figure it out. It's the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. That's how you figure it out. So I went back in 2016, it was November 8th. Um, we had uh, 18 hundredths of an inch of uh, our brain that day, 64 and 33 were the temps. Pretty chilly day in 2012, uh, 40 and 27, it was dry. And obviously that was uh, not too long after uh, Sandy, Superstorm Sandy that we had. Um, uh, and then we had uh, November 4th, 2008, um, 57 and 48, we had a trace of precip. Back in 04, a pretty warm day, 70 and a low of 47, and we had a 10th of an inch of rain. Uh, 2000 was dry. 58.35, not too far from normal, actually. Uh, and then November 5th of 1996, 49 and 36, a trace. And then November 3rd, um, 64 and 42 dry. So you can see really there's nothing really crazy weather-wise, um, at least here in State College on presidential election uh, days going back to 1992. Now, if we do a comparison uh, this year versus uh, 2020, uh, uh, this year 2020 versus 2005, we want to compare these two years uh, through the 31st of October. Uh, very interesting, and you can see some similarities here. The total precip in 2005, 28.97, just shy of 29 inches, and of course we had the 31.31 so far this year. Um, the summer months or meteorological summer, June through August of 05, it was dry, uh, 7.6 inches um, versus 8.36 this year. So both were below normal, below the normal of about 11 and a half inches. So that was an interesting correlation. We both years, 05 and, and 2020 here in State College were drier than normal. Uh, the temperatures this summer, again, June to August period ran 3.3 degrees above normal in 05, the departure was 2.6 degrees above. And of course, uh, this is the real big, um, very interesting correlation. Uh, the Atlantic tropical season it was very active for both years. And uh, we're basically tied right now with 05 as far as the most number of named storms. Uh, we're going deep into the Greek alphabet so far, and you know, it's, we may not be done yet. So uh, very, very interesting. Uh, you know, similarity between this year and 05 as far as the Atlantic uh, tropical season. Now, what I did was, uh, again, since, since 05 or 05, 06 is one of our, you know, top analog years or winters for our upcoming winter forecast, uh, some of the other years, 2016, 17, 83, 84, we had some others. Um, I looked at what it was like in December of 05 and then January and February of 06 and March of 06 and kind of wanted to just, again, not that it means anything, but it's kind of food for thought. And it might be, you know, you could have some interesting uh, similarities there perhaps. 
uh, December 2005, um, that year winter really got off to a bang uh, very quickly and, and pretty harshly in December of that year of 05. Temperatures for the month ran uh, four degrees colder than normal. We actually had 15.1 inches of snow uh, for the month and, and that was through multiple events. It wasn't just like one and done, one big storm and, and, and nothing else. It was quiet, but we did have multiple events. So we really had a pretty, um, you know, a pretty aggressive start to, to winter uh, that year. But then it's amazing, you get to January of 06, it's kind of like we flipped the switch and it went totally in the opposite direction. Temperatures in January of 06 ran uh, nine degrees above normal. And we only had the entire month, we only had the 1.7 inches of snow. February got a little bit closer to normal, got somewhat colder. We were, you know, just a four tenths of a degree above and we had 4.3 inches of snow. So we had a little bit more winter weather, but you know, not, not anywhere near to the level of what we had in, in December. And then March 06 was uh, a little bit above, uh, some ups and downs as March, you know, almost always has. And, um, and, and of course things are changing rapidly in March. And then, uh, and temperatures again, 1.5 above, and we had 2.2 inches of snow. So not really a whole lot of snow in March. It's kind of a lottie da month. So, you know, what is this upcoming winter going to bring? <laughs> Big question mark. It's anybody's guess, but you know, if 05 is pretty uh, close correlation on that, it would be interesting that maybe we actually have a, you know, some early winter that comes, you know, quickly, whether it's by Thanksgiving or shortly after into December, and then we could have a flip toward uh, much milder after that. Now getting into the current and uh, upcoming uh, weather here uh, in, in central Pennsylvania and State College uh, in particular, uh, obviously it's unseasonally cold, it's windy in the short term. Uh, we're going to have a dry chilly election day, not as cold as today, but, but certainly still chilly. And then we're going to have pretty quiet weather and dry uh, Wednesday right through the upcoming weekend and a very impressive uh, warm up uh, in temperatures and Looks like a very nice weather for uh, the game, um, Penn State Maryland football game uh, on Saturday afternoon. Of course, no people in the stands, but I'm um, sure you know if you're in your dorms or outside. I mean, it's just going to be a really nice day to be outside that day, either way. So I'm going to start off uh, kind of like the top down. I didn't get the 200 or 300 or 250 millibar winds. I probably should have started there, but um, kind of with the interest of time. Uh, I started with 500. Very, very impressive, very deep trough uh, that's over the eastern part of uh, North America right now. Uh, this was um, uh, this morning. I mean, it was off of the Euro. It's a, it's a, it's a forecast, but it's a short, you know, it's from the 6C run. Um, so this is basically where it initialized it this morning at 12Z, the 500 millibar. See the big ridge out west and a big deep trough uh, in the eastern part of the country. And obviously you could see the the one vort lobe uh, just passed us now, and then there's some other energy uh, hanging back there. One last short that's that's got to come down through this trough, the back end of the trough in the Western Great Lakes. This morning's uh, 700 millibar again really kind of tells the story of how quiet things are across good chunk of the country. Look at how dry it is at 700. You've got your departing. Uh, moisture with the trough itself in the northeast now, a little break, and then you've had you've got that other uh, system up in the Great Lakes. But beyond that, and and a little bit of moisture in far south Florida, but much of the country, uh, the 700 moisture is is quite uh, uh, non-existent. There's your 850 temperatures again. That really tells the story. It matches up very very well with what you see at 500. Um, there's your pocket of coldest air, and look at that. You've actually got a you know, a, a pretty big core of, you know, where it's below zero at 850 and, and even a pretty good uh, chunk of territory that it's below minus five and even that darker shading of blue, that's your minus 10 C. So that, that's some pretty impressive air. That's, you know, the type of thing you would see more like in late November and not the very beginning of uh, November, but you could see how much milder or warmer it is at 850 across a good chunk of the rest of the country. This was uh, at 13Z, I took a screenshot of this. Um, this is the surface pressure. And now it looks way more impressive than what it really is because um, the surface pressures here are analyzed every 10th of a millibar. Uh, so imagine 
uh, Bill Syrett in his class uh, having his students analyze every tenth of a millibar. <laughs> and in, 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 in big strong storms, it would just look like a big smudge. You wouldn't be able to do it, but fortunately the computer can do this. Uh, but it really does show very well uh, the tight gradient, you know, between that high pressure area uh, over the middle of Mississippi Valley and of course low pressure up over Eastern Canada. And then um, we go to the next screen. We've got, uh, this is the, the surface map. It's a regional uh, surface map uh, plot uh, at 13Z. So again, you could see the, the cold air, you see how low the dew points are, you can see your wind barbs. And you know, obviously you see your, your cloud cover too. It shows up on those obs and even some snow, snowflake obs um, in parts of the Northeast with the, with the trough and of course, with the downwind of the Great Lakes effect as well. The uh, National Composite Radar, this was earlier today, it was 7.30 this morning. Um, <coughs> excuse me, and you can see, you know, again, much of the country uh, quiet and dry. You've got a few uh, echoes down there, you know, in South, far South Florida and just offshore. Most of your action is in the Northeast. You've got your closer to your low pressure system up over Eastern Canada, and you've got some impressive echoes up over Maine. And then you've just got a lot of, you know, snow showers, flurries, and of course, downwind, if, when you do close-ups and zoom-ins of those, you could see the bands of lake enhanced or lake effect uh, snow coming off of Erie and Ontario with this situation. You know, the old rule of thumb is uh, between the lake surface uh, temperature and 850, you want to see 13 degrees C difference or greater, and you have every bit of that and, and more right now and that's why you're getting the you know the lake effect uh, going on this was um this kind of tells the story of wh why it's so windy um this was the uh, off of the 6c run of the nam uh for state college for 15z today which basically is now um and look at how well mixed that is not even just to 850 it's mixed all the way to 800 very unstable looking sounding uh, and look at the winds, the wind profile on the right there, you can see how well aligned everything is. So that's a no brainer when you, you know, have a lot of wind off the deck, you got a tight gradient, a very well mixed atmosphere, and you're just transporting that, uh, the momentum down, the, the downward transfer of momentum. Um, that's why it's been as windy and as gusty as it's been. Uh, and that kind of tells the story right there. Interesting though, as you go later into the day today, this is off of the same run of the NAM. Now this is for 21Z today. Um, and you could see that, I mean, it's still unstable, it's still well mixed, uh, but now the inversion level, instead of being all the way up to, you know, all the way to 800, now it's just your standard 850 uh, mixing. And it does seem like the wind speeds a little bit have, have come down a little bit uh, and they've, they've gone more westerly. And here's the, Here's the wind forecast, again, off of the 6C run of the NAM, uh, every broken down every three hours, and I, and I also did every uh, 25 millibars. This is nice to use, um, you know, when you're looking at different levels where you're mixing from and so forth. And I like to look at every three rather than just jumping every to every six hours. But you can see if you just look at the, the columns there, and if you start even like 900, you know, you kind of tells a story or certainly at 850, that kind of gives an idea of, you know, sort of the top end of where the wind gusts uh, could be. Uh, and these are in knots. So you look at 15Z, 300 at 42 knots, um, 290 at 35 knots at 18Z, um, 280 at 39 knots. So, so it sort of gives, you know, if you're mixing from 850-ish there and bringing that down to the surface and, and getting the gustiness, easily you can still get gusts uh, two or past 40 miles per hour, maybe 45 this afternoon. I think the strongest winds we may have already had it uh, experienced it already uh, in this particular time, but this is what really caught my eye. And watch this, look at the winds at 850. Um, let's just go back here, oops. Okay, so go look at the winds now at 850 um, and look at how the, uh, the winds really pick up tonight. There's like a pretty strong low level jet that comes overhead during the night tonight. And I thought that really caught my eye. Look at it, zero Z Tuesday. Uh, look at three Z, 65 knots at 850. Even at 900, it's 43 knots. 
uh, 16 hots at, 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 at 60. So I'm concerned that there could be a time tonight where the winds are really blowing quite strongly and it's not going to be the classic case where, you know, the sun sets and you decouple and the winds drop off and la di da This, this could be a case where, you know, it tries to decouple, the winds try to drop off. Maybe the, the gradient um, slackens off a little bit, the pressure gradient, but you've got an awful lot of wind there that's not too far off the deck. Um, and so I would be somewhat concerned that it's still, you know, at least for a while tonight, it's still blowing maybe a good part of the night tonight. It's still blowing quite strongly and, and the winds just like never give up tonight. They just keep blowing uh, all night long. Now here's the, um, here's the Euro uh, gridded data. This was off of the zero Z run. This is out for the next uh, 10 days. But what I wanted to point out here was well, a couple of things. Um, you know, look at your 850s today, 12Z, 18Z. I mean, it's cold, minus nine, minus seven points. It's cold at 850. Look at your thicknesses there on the far right column. Um, you know, <laughs> these are some pretty low thicknesses, 521, 522, 28. So it's cold air over top of us. And also look at the heights. That's really key here. Uh, look at where the heights are. Um, you know, look at where they were at, at 6Z, for example, 531 uh, decameters, uh, 542 at, 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 uh, at 18Z. But look at what happens So This is pretty impressive. Um, just over the next 24 to 48 hours, look at how quickly and how, you know, the, the heights just, just, just come up very, very, very quickly and aggressively. Uh, again, look at like 18Z today, 542. Uh, decameters, and then look at 18Z tomorrow, 567. Um, so that is what you do the math, and that's like 250 meter uh, height rises there. And then you keep going forward, you go to 18Z on Wednesday, and you're up to 582 decameters. So again, that that really aggressive, that's another 150 meter uh, height rise there. So you really have tremendous uh, height rises and subsidence going on here over the next couple of days. It looks like your heights kind of peak here, like Wednesday into Thursday, they come down maybe just a teeny bit the end of the week and then they come right back up and then then they they have their ultimate peak um, on Saturday. Look at that uh, Saturday, Saturday evening, 587 uh, Sunday at zero Z. So these are some very high heights uh, for this time of the year. And that result is that we've got a stretch of some really nice weather coming up and of course, look at your 850s as well, how they warm up in your thicknesses. So that's really the going to be the big story after we get through this, you know, the wind and cold today and tonight and still another chilly day tomorrow. Um, much, much better and nicer weather shaping up later in the week. Now, it may not be totally clean. You know, you would think, boy, with all those massive height rises going on, it's just going to be like, you know, totally sunny by day and and clear at night and there won't be a cloud in the sky. And lo and behold, uh, the Euro is actually picking up. And I think the GFS was too. I didn't do a screenshot of that. But I think there are going to be, at least at times, maybe more so on Thursday, uh, there are going to be some high cloud patches. It's very dry, bone dry. You know, once you get below 400 or, you know, 450, 500, it's very dry. But, but there are going to be some cirrus around, I think, later in the week on Thursday that might have somewhat of a limiting effect on how high we could go with the temps. And then here is a snapshot, again, off of the Euro, off of the zero Z run of the Euro. Here's our snapshot uh, for uh, 18Z on Saturday, which is uh, just, you know, a couple hours before uh, kickoff for the, for the Penn State game. That looks gorgeous. I mean, that's just all open. The entire sounding is open. It looks like we're mixing from 900 uh, my word of advice, I'm a soundings guy. I, I use soundings, you know, skew tees every day. Uh, and this year, this time of year, you cannot, as with the weaker sun, the lower sun angle, shorter days, you just can't assume uh, that, you know, every day you're mixing to 850. Obviously, on a day like today, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's so windy and, you know, unstable and everything. But um, you can't assume. You have to look every day. And this would be a day where you're looking at the 900 millibar um, temperatures to, to do your estimates of what the surface temp would be because you're, you're not mixing all the way to 850. And with that, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of thing, you know, as far as where the temperatures could possibly be by the time we get to the end of the week and the weekend. And I wanted to point something out and general rule of thumb, uh, 
for State College being at about 1,200 feet in elevation, at eight from 850, if you're mixing, you could add about 13 Celsius, about uh, 900. You could add uh, maybe a maximum of, of, of 10, maybe nine or 10, uh, 925. Uh, you could you could add maybe seven or eight, and then maybe uh, you know maybe five or six only for if it's down to nine 950. But at 900, you're basically you know the max you could add is 10, maybe nine or 10. You could add on top of that to get your estimate of a high temp. So then I looked at, uh, if you just look at 900 now, this is off of the Euro, look at what the 900 millibar temperature is forecast to be off of the Euro at 18Z on Saturday, plus 13. So that's pretty warm. If you got the maximum amount added on top of 900, do your math, you know, uh, 13 and, uh, you know, and, and you add 10 on that, you're coming up to plus 23. That's, that's about, that's about 73 degrees. Now, even if you only, you know, even if you only added, you only added nine on that, you're still coming up in the low seventies, uh, 71, 72. So it's possible that, you know, the, the model guidance, uh, the MOS numbers and so forth, you know, trying to show temperatures in the mid sixties or mid or upper sixties, whatever, that's probably a you know a conservative place to be right now. I could see how, especially by then, the ground, at least the topsoil, has gotten dried out uh, from the recent rains and everything. And so, um, you know, and, and of course, the vegetation is shot and it's done for the season now. Uh, so, you know, you got to wonder: could we at least be knocking on the doorstep step of a seventy uh, by the time you get to the start of the weekend? Even though the models and the forecast, none of the forecasts really quite have that yet. I could see how temperatures overachieve somewhat uh, at the end of the week and this upcoming weekend. And speaking of the 500 millibar, we looked at it on the gridded data. This is actually the, uh, the forecast again off of the Euro for 12Z uh, on Saturday, the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. So look at that nice ridge. What a difference from what you see today to what you see on Saturday. And there's your big deep trough uh, out in the western part of the country. I did some uh, peak wind gusts. I just, uh, th these were through uh, nine o'clock. Uh, I didn't check the 10 o'clock data. Uh, these were through nine. I think the highest in the state that I saw, and I don't know what we had, and we could discuss that after I get done here, what the uh, peak so far was at Walker Building, but uh, University Park Airport only had a gust of 36, but I'm sure probably Walker Building was higher than that. Uh, Mount Pocono, seemed to be the highest in the state of 53 mile per hour gust. Um, and then we also had um, uh, Altoona at 41, Erie 49, Harrisburg, Middletown 46, 45 in Philly, and in Pittsburgh only a 33 mile per hour gust, but pretty impressive. I know uh, today, Monday is garbage day for me and I had to make sure once the, you know, once they got the garbage and my can was out there, I had to quickly go out there so it wasn't blowing away and down the street here, so. And that was a quick, uh, that was the GO-16 uh, visible uh, static shot here, um, F-15Z, so just a short while ago. Again, look at how quiet it is, it is across a good chunk of the country. You've got some clouds and some precip in the Great Lakes in the Northeast. Again, that little bit of uh, activity way, way down, moisture down in South Florida, but man, most of the country is very quiet and dry uh, right now. So the forecast, wrapping it up here, um, uh, for today, you know, very windy, cold day, mixture of clouds and sun, um, probably still a flurry or two around early, but the, with the rising heights and the flow going a little more westerly, uh, I don't think we're going to see too much more going forward here. We may have already seen, um, you know, the, the maximum amount of, and the worst of the snow showers and flurries and so forth, maybe still a little bit around early. Uh, winds this afternoon, kind of a west-northwest direction, 15 to 30 Still think there'll be some gusts uh, 40 to 45, at least early on. Uh, high about 41. You know, you could argue for a 40, a 42. I do think we get just out of the 30s, but not by much. Uh, so, and it's going to feel like the wind, it's going to feel like it's in the 20s most of the time. Uh, tonight, clear to partly cloudy skies, a blustery cold night. Again, that wind might just hold up like all night long tonight. It just may never go away at all. Um, I'm going to call it 12 to 25, but some gusts out of 40. And I'm a little concerned that those gusts could even be a little stronger than that, given that low level jet. 
Um, and then for tomorrow, sunshine, some clouds. Um, uh, it'll be brisk and chilly, not as cold as it was today, uh, but you know, temperature still on the on the chilly side of, of normal. Uh, we're going to go 49 for the high tomorrow, and winds west 10 to 20. Still some gusts, maybe up to 30. And then we start the warm up here Wednesday, mostly sunny. It'll become milder, jump it up 10 degrees and push it to 59, could be 60. Thursday, partly sunny. Again, I'm, you know, with the high clouds, more of a partial sun or uh, filtered sun through those cirrus, a mild day, get it up past 60 and low 60, 62. And then uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, Friday, plenty of sunshine, call it nice, 65. Saturday, I'm a little bit above guidance, not by much, a couple of degrees. And again, I can see it 70 or better that day, given what I'm seeing on the model soundings. I will call it just a gorgeous day, beautiful, um, and 68 uh, for the high. And that is the end of my presentation. Um, any questions or comments uh, from anybody? You can use the uh, chat function or q &A. I saw that Bill had mentioned that we had 35, I believe, for today and a peak of 41 yesterday for our OK, rest. that sounds good. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that 50, that 54 was um, uh, or 56. That was at Mount Pocono. And, and where that is, I mean, obviously, it's a high elevation place. And I think they're oftentimes they're exposed uh, very well to that either a west or northwest wind there at Mount Pocono. So I've noticed in those cases, um, they they do very well with the wind speeds there, you know, at that place, MPO. So, so hopefully that made sense. And, uh, you know, we kind of just have to get through this, uh, you know, this with the wind and cold in the short term. But boy, it, it's looking great here later in the week. And, uh, and it looks gorgeous here by the end of the week. And watch that, you know, watch those temperatures and see as we get closer, uh, watch to see if the models sort of catch up and sort of figure it out <laughs> and they trend upward with those high temperatures. I'm, I'd just be curious. I've seen that, you know, many times before. And oftentimes, of course, you know, we know the MOS numbers like the GFS MOS, for example, what it does in the longer range, it tends to, it, it, it tends to lean toward climo more it doesn't go as aggressive as it could so it's something to watch for but hey i'll take whether it's 65 or 68 or 71 um in november i'll take that mm -hmm. <laughs> and we know it's coming down the pike so definitely we'll we'll take this nice stretch of weather so i see uh, marissa's uh note there my pleasure my my pleasure marissa and bill <laughs> anybody uh, have any Questions? I guess the screen share worked out fine then, huh? Yes, it did. <laughs> yeah, the, keeping it in a PowerPoint, it's, you know, sort of keeps it more, you know, compact and it's just, yeah. you're not jumping around all over the place, so. Mm -hmm. Less moving parts for sure. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, if there's not any other um, questions or comments, then we can end the meeting. I'll stop the recording and it will be available 